What's up, guys? Of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours, of course, this guy render. And guys, we're hitting 250 battle upload, which is awesome. Sadly, uh, the guys that I've been reaching out on had trouble actually getting into this. So due to that, I'm actually gonna take a battle that was extremely good and a battle I'm really looking forward to upload, but just I didn't have the time. It's a 51 turn battle, so I have speeded it up because, well. It was needed to had a lot of like blocky Pokemon here. Looking to my opponent's team here, his name is Dragon Factor and he's a long time follower and a great person just in general. He got what is that? I think he has like six walls. Or rather five walls and one on oil with speed and macro. It is super 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 freaking bulky. It's so bulky that I, I just when I saw this team preview, I was like, oh man, this this is gonna get rough. This is gonna get one of those really, really long battles where I don't know if I can pull through, to be honest. Um, and at my team here, I actually got a lot of funny Pokemon to use, so I actually felt even worse because of that. I have uh, Archeops, which is a special set, Mr. Mime, Lampent, uh, Wormodan, Granville, and Caracosta. Uh, anything on his team is a potential threat because everything on his team can wall out specific folks. So, I need to play it risky, and when I say risky, I mean risky risky, and basically hope that I break through something. And also, have an update after this battle, so make sure to stay tuned for that. So, with all this in mind, let's go. So from the get-go, I was really back on him having a defensive poke from the get-go, so I just brought my specially oriented Archeops, just to do heavy damage really. And he's gonna bring the Weezing, and he did not expect a heat boy hitting him. And you know, I get that, he, he was actually going for infestation, he had an infestation Will-O-Wisp set, which is, it's super annoying, but he's now in a position where his uh, defensive wall is uh, well walled out, it, it can't really do anything to this, he doesn't have the bulk to do so, so he's gonna bring Clock, which is a Dusk Club, so I'm free from the infestation, and um, he's gonna place my choice specs, I go for another Heat Wave, and of course, this is doing nothing with evil light and whatnot, and it's so tanky. Dust Club is such a hero, what a Pokemon. So I'm just gonna go to Varalis, hoping for a Will Wisp, but he's gonna go for the, well, Confused Ray. That is awful. And um, I really didn't feel that, you know, I should be risking this and trying to set up and whatnot. So I just, I went out of there and brought my Astral. And he's actually going for Pain Split, probably predicting me to go for Shadow Ball. He Painsplit doesn't really do enough here, and uh, I am back on track in, after the first turn. Um, he had uh, the um, Sandslash as a potential um, Rapid Spinner, but I just felt that I still need to get the rocks up. Like, my Wormadan is such a great Pokemon this battle. It, it is one of those Pokemon that can, um, it can't hurt that many Pokemon, but it doesn't get killed that easily. And I think my opponent really appreciated how strong this Pokemon really is. And I do... Actually, luckily here, and don't hit myself with confusion, get this thing on a timer, which is awesome, because without a knockoff on this thing, there is no way for me of really pulling through, and I couldn't risk the possibility of a potential Will-O-Wisp against the Pokemon that actually could hurt it. So I'm going to decide to switch out, there's really nothing you can do besides uh, Earthquake, but I really feel that if I show Earthquake, you know, then I have a good idea on which Pokemon can wall out, I don't want to showcase that just yet. So it's going to bring Heidrich here. And I, I didn't feel that comfortable in this matchup, I truly didn't. While I do, and I can't really stress enough, I do wall out his rapid spin. I still felt that, you know, Dolph is packing you know, enough bulk to be able to actually fin win against his 1-on-1. He's gonna go for knockoff, which is a safer move. Uh, Earthquake will probably be close enough to kill me, but he's gonna show me the super fact. And I was like, dude, dude, why? Why you got that move? But if you have a rapid spin stealth rock set with, of course, the sand slash, then you cannot bound to have the super fang. It's not a bad idea at all, actually. So I am forced to switch out. I'm gonna switch to Cabal because I did expect to maybe go for Niku, but it's gonna go for rapid spin. And like I said, there I have yet to see that it have a stealth rock or anything like that. It does seem that it doesn't pack the stealth rock, but have the um, earthquake instead. So anyway, Cabal is really, really walling this thing out, and he's gonna bring Jaisa, which is, well, it's the devil. It is the one Pokemon I really can't hurt, and I was really feeling that. I need to get out, so I'm gonna bring Dolph yet again. Uh, well, I do, Dolph is really, since it has some potential wall out potential here, there's really no way for me of actually pulling through. 
And I think knowing that was just that I might be able to just sack this thing and just, you know, let it go. And uh, I'm just going to go for play rough. Since I don't have, of course, the... Um, I was a call a choice man anymore. There is really no potential sweep that Dolph can really do. And like I said, I was really feeling that. And paralyzation didn't make things better. Uh, I do miss that I didn't have the quick feet or rattle at this point because it would actually have been sped me up a bit. I think it is quick feet that this guy gets, which would have been awesome and extremely important. But um, like I said, there I'm basically in a faltering move. He actually decides to go for a pain split before actually finish me off. Which I found a bit strange, because like I said, there, um, there is no HP for him gaining that, and I don't think he under understand how much a sludge wave will do, or a sludge bomb. So I am pretty darn close to killing this thing before he finishes me off. And um, yeah, that is really bad. That is really bad, to be honest. So my first Pokemon is going to go out, and I still haven't really taken out any of his Pokemon. I whittled down his a few of his wall walls, but I'm not even closer at the point or in the get-go. So anyway, he's not feeling frisky enough to uh, sack that off. I think I went yet again for heat. No, I went for Asian power, hoping for a boost, really. And uh, yeah, there is there is nothing happening here. Kecleon is basically nope. I am a special defensive wall, and I was like, yeah, face me in real life, bro. And brought my Warmerdan, and Warmerdan here is um, he's gonna finally show his brawn. He had enough, you know, the walls is ticking him off, he's the true wall of this battle. And he's gonna go for Rock Slide, go get the protein going, which means he's a Rock Type. I did suspect that that was a possibility, and went for an EQ, and BOOM! Get out of here, Kecleon, you're finished. That was obviously a pro play on my side. No, but really, I could have might as well got a flinch there. I was really hoping that he had Rock Slide or anything like that, so I could do potential damage on him and I think that worked extremely well in my favor for once it actually worked so anyway I'm gonna go for protect here because I need to get some recovery going to be honest I thought it was a smarter move and then switch out to see if I actually can wall anything out here but he is predicting me really well here going to sand slash definitely knowing that there is a possibility that I'll go to Viralis and well goddamn <laughs> and that is not only the worst I was feeling that okay he could go for a knockoff, and I'll take that and try to retaliate. And I was thinking that there is no way he go for a second knockoff because it won't kill me. There is no way he have to go for an earthquake. I was so sure about this. I'm gonna switch out, thinking that you know I get a free switch in into the monster that is Cabal. But no, he went for a freaking knockoff. No, not only did he knock off my choice bags, I'm now in the defeatist range, which means that my Cabal is. Well, it's not good anymore. It's basically dead by default because it doesn't hurt anymore. It isn't scary at all. What do I am able to switch out moves here? There is just no way of Mia coming back. And I was really debating when I made this set, you know, should I have Roost? Should I have some way of coming back? Yes. Yes, I should. Who the hell cares about Asian power anyway? And of course, now that he's gone, I actually only one potential sweeper left, and that is the Mr. Mime. So that means I need to keep my Mr. Mime as a good of health as possible, which means I'll sack off Viralis because it doesn't have the evil light left, so it's kind of good, kind of dead, really. So I'm gonna bring Asteril here and uh, basically trying to scare it off a bit. I actually think I went for an earthquake anyway, hoping for no, I went for toxic, right? And obviously, it's not doing any wonders there, as you guys can see. And, um, yeah, basically from here on out, I had to really start finding ways to defeat his wall but without losing my sweeper. And, you know, Pain Split seems extremely obvious. I had to switch out. There was no way I was going to do any plays there. And basically, like I said, the Cabal is without, with the defeaters range, it just... It's a freaking trash bag is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't do anything, but then again, there's nothing this thing can really do to him. Which is kind of funny when you think about it. But basically, I need to get this thing out of the way. And he's gonna bring the lolly. Actually, Cradley is actually quite a threat in this battle because I need that thing toxic so bad. But I can't bring my Wormerlin into this because I have no idea how much it will hurt me. Giga Drain is just one of those moves that just it's too powerful. Cradle League would just bulk itself up. So anyway, I gotta bring Alistair here. Basically, 
what I decided to do was that I can probably take that one out. If so, then you know, I should be good to go. But he actually bring the clock here, which was extremely, extremely surprised about that he was gonna just fire this thing up. But then again, I don't have, you know, a lot of Pokemon left that I actually can pace with off, so I felt that he was gonna save switch anything. And he's gonna bring the Hindrush with his Sand Slash. And, um, don't ask me why, there is no way this guy is taking this. And uh, finally the Sassly went down, which was extremely, not gonna lie, kinda, kinda bad, really. I think he just fought off the, the walls that he can't really use anymore, and doesn't see them as a free switch in, so he's just gonna fart them off straight off that. So now we actually are free for free, which is awesome, but Shiza is still one of those Pokemon that just, I can't defeat it. And like I said, I can't have my Mr. Mime, well, paralyzed. And the only way for me to actually take this guy out is to um, talk to it, because he can roost up, he can stall me out, there's no way I can do enough damage. So I was thinking that, yeah, of course I could flinch here, but I do get another wind and actually get another chance of trying to get it toxic. But I'm going to go for Protect anyway, because I really need to be as much health as possible against the Cradley, because like I said, there is no way that the Pokemon that I got left, which is Caracosta and Mr. Mime 2, can deal with it on 101. So I knew that Toxic would be my best bet, and I really need to have the right amount of HP to actually... Well, to make that work, to be honest. Uh, due to actually me playing really obvious here, I actually decided to, on his Roost turn, to actually go for Stealth Rocks instead of Protect. Because, well, while Stealth Rock isn't really helping me that much, it still is you know, a free turn of something. And I didn't want to go for an earthquake because that would risk me of actually taking it out. And I can't take it out like that. I really need my Karakost to come in and uh, be the first Pokemon against uh, Cradley. Because I need that Cradley to go for Giga Drain so it is locked into that, which it obviously expects. But not only that, but uh, Karakosta, if he's dying to the, to the Cradley, that means the Cradley get the least amount of HP left from me, which is really what I wanted. And basically, we bring back Warmadan and get enough HP to survive Giga Drain and then take it from there, really. So he's going for Thunder Wave. Like I said, there is really no way for me of uh, doing anything phase besides uh, Supar. Because had I gone for an Aqua Jet and take it out, given the possibility that his prankster stick would have pulled through, uh, I would basically activate his Storm Drain, which is something I don't want to do because that raises special attack. And like I said, Mr. Mime is my only response to this. Like I said, I really needed this Pokemon to go down to uh, to the Giga Rain first off before anything else, because besides that, I, I just I don't want to hurt this thing before actually doing um, well, not giving enough HP back from its attack. So I'm gonna protect myself, get some recovery, and then pretty much betting surviving this Giga Rain and retaliate with Toxic. And yes, I throw with eight HP, which was. Um, yeah, that was that was close. So it got this thing toxic. It still isn't over. I mean, I still got Mr. Mom against things, this thing. And like I said, due to that damage, I know that this thing is specs, which means that it's actually quite powerful. And uh, I basically have to go for protect, getting the, pretty much ranking up the toxic, because the last matchup is gonna decide it all. And um, and due to him being locked, means that he can't recover stall me. He can't switch into potential sludge wave which uh, actually would have hurt him in the long run here and um, yeah basically Mr. Mime just I don't know what you're gonna do but do it I, I really need to kill this thing as as fast as I can so Lester is gonna come in and gonna go for Dazzling Gleam hoping to do enough damage and uh, no this thing takes it really well and the Giga Ring does roughly the same amount of damage but due to recovery had I not gone for Toxic here, I would not have won. There was no way for me of actually winning this round. So I do finally actually take this guy out, which is awesome. And I win 1-0, which is really close. So definitely thank you to Dragon Factor for this battle. Um, like I said there, the Toxic that Wormodan worked out here was... It was awesome. It really, really made a battle that I should have lost to a battle that actually, you know... I came through, I really did, and I never thought I would, so definitely thank you Dragon Effect for this battle. So yeah, really sorry about the length for this video, like I said, it was a 50 to 1 turn battle, and I never knew that my team had enough stamina to actually, you know, survive that round, 
and my Archaeops really helped a lot in this battle. I'm not gonna lie here, that thing just it did so much damage. So my wrong switch in um, to the knockoff definitely put me in a worse position because I was in a position where I could uh, hurt a lot of his Pokemon quite efficiently, and um, it basically ended with that knockoff, and I struggled so much. And um, yeah, um, while I do win, it's not a comfortable win, and my opponent might as well win because he had so many Pokemon that could have survived for such a long time. He was definitely very powerful this battle, and uh, I struggled, so yeah, it was great. And as it comes to show, too, that having an offensively built team just for fun is maybe a good response, you know, the full tank team that you can go up against. I don't like slow tanky battle, but I can definitely see the charm of having tanky Pokemons. You're very likely to win due to your stamina alone, and this was definitely almost the exception of that. Um, so anyway, like I said, Dragon Factor, really GG man, that was definitely one of the toughest battle I had in some time. I really hate, like I said, stealthy battles, but it was not that stealthy as it was, well, basically we trying to overcome one another, so it was definitely not a bean to be honest. Um, so anyway, to the updates that I was talking about, if you want to stay, if you stayed this far, you know, thank you, really great of you guys. Uh, <laughs> but really, I wanted to get to some fast updates. Like I said, I have some videos that I'm going to create with future, with both the winter team or hail team, you know, how to utilize that. And I'm going to try some new different things in the higher tiers, I'm really looking forward to trying that out again. And um, like I said, my streams is something I 